The Ford F-150 Lightning, electric pickup truck from the company. I've said a number of times it would sell incredibly well in Australia, even though it's, to be honest, not as good as it could have been. Ford's Jim Farley, he's the CEO of Ford himself, has made this comment. He went on a road trip and he said, ah, yeah, we can do a better job. We've got version two. Version two, don't worry, it's going to be heaps better. We're going to really improve it. In fact, they don't just have version two, they've got version three, apparently, they're already working on. However, all that aside, we don't have any real compelling at all. We've got no electric pickup trucks here. There's no choice. There's one model from China. It's an LDV electric vehicle. I saw it at the motor show. I looked at it. I looked at the battery because you can see it's totally exposed. <laughs> Why is there exposed? The price, it's more expensive than the Ford F-150 Lightning. It's ridiculous. It's a joke. But the thing is, it's got the market all to itself. Why do I mean by that? Well, mining here is our biggest, well, it's our biggest export, mining things like lithium. We are the world's biggest lithium producer. But the thing is, if you want to use a mine, right, you need enormous extraction fans if you want to drive diesel vehicles into the mine because we now know they kill people. So firefighters, they've all been dying early, can't, massive cancer rates, much, much higher death rates than the average population because people always start up the fire trucks, or well, they did, inside the fire station, and this caused huge problems. So now we know that all the problems it causes, the diesel. So even if you can make a crap and very expensive I mean crap and very expensive, very seriously, electric pickup truck. The mines will buy it. Doesn't matter what you charge pretty much, even if it's not very good, they'll buy it. So we don't have really any choice other than this. And what's happening here in Australia is companies like Toyota, people are buying their vehicles and retrofitting them, turning an internal combustion engine vehicle into an electric one. They're not doing a very good job of it, to be honest, charging $200,000. Now the game is changing. Ford F-150 Lightning, it appears, is coming to Australia. Australia loves pickup trucks. This is good news. I hate sitting behind pickup trucks, spewing out diesel fumes. This changes the game, and it's actually a pretty good vehicle in comparison to a lot of the pickup trucks we have that are not electric today. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The Ford F-150 Lightning has been spied a few times. A few times now, um, basically testing here in Australia. It's under engineering evaluation and was spotted charging in Victoria, Australia. I've got to say, it does look good. I mean, hey, I know a lot of people hate pickup trucks, but it looks, these photos here, it, it looks quite nice. Anyway, a Facebook user posted these images of an engineering evaluation vehicle, the Ford F-150 Lightning charging at Eltham Leisure Center in Victoria, to a BYD Facebook group page, after which he was summarily executed by the BYD fans. I'm no, just joking, he wasn't executed. Um, he was just sent off to um, Siberia to live his days in prison, in solitary confinement for posting a Ford. Just kidding, guys, just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> Ford F-150 Lightning, it's gonna be a competitor, direct competitor to BYD's electric truck. But unfortunately, with the bad news here is guys, we thought for a few years now that BYD's pickup truck would be electric, and that's what BYD even told us. Now it's going to be a plug-in hybrid. And there's some serious problems with BYD's plug-in hybrids. Even if you're the most dedicated, hardcore BYD fan, there's quite a few of them now, that's all right, it's fine. But even if you were one of those, you can't argue with the fact that BYD's plug-in hybrids have a pretty terrible uh, reliability record. That's just a fact. So unfortunately, BYD don't have a competitor now. But that means, hey, if you're a fan of BYD or anyone else, you can you can get one of these. You don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel like, oh, I'm I'm kind of doing the wrong thing by my favorite brand because there's no other choice here, guys. There's nothing else. Anyway, this vehicle comes weeks after the launch of the F-150 internal combustion engine version here in Australia. In fact, people here in Australia love the F-150 so much that we import Ford here as in the Australian version of Ford, not the real Ford, just our distributor version here. They import your F-150s guys in America. They bring them here. It costs a lot of money to ship them here from America. Shipping costs have gone up enormously. And then they remanufacture them using like 500 to 1,000 new parts. Move the steering wheel from one side of the car to the other, make all these massive changes, resell them, and they sell like crazy. 
I mean, fastest growing segment of vehicles in Australia is medium, these, these large pickup trucks, right? They're large based on Australian standards. Fastest growing, I think its segment is growing by 200%. It's incredible. Although Ford Australia has not said for sure that the F-150 Lightning is in fact coming to Australia. They have said they're assessing the market. And it looks like they're taking this very seriously. I mean, you don't bring it here and test it if you're not actually really wanting to do it, if you're not really considering it. The F-150 Lightning, now, its price went up five times. And then a bunch of people who had orders, Ford had more than 200,000 pre-orders. A lot of them canceled because Ford just kept on raising the prices. But because they did that too many times, they've actually dropped the price I believe three times since it hit a peak price point. So the price of the probably the most likely version to come to Australia, the Lariat, I believe it's about sixty thousand US dollars. That's only about ninety thousand Australian dollars. The internal combustion engine version here today is about one hundred and seven thousand Australian dollars. So around about seventy three thousand US dollars. It could be a similar. It's very possible. Ford could bring the F-150 Lightning here at a similar price to what the F-150 gasoline internal combustion engine version sells for. This would be awesome. Now, one of the things I love about it is it's got ridiculous amount of power. It's got a choice of two battery packs. You've got a 98 kilowatt hour pack and a 131 kilowatt hour pack. They come with 337 kilowatt of power in the base model, which is massive, or 433 kilowatt in the more powerful version. So. That 433 kilowatt, I think that's about 600 horsepower. Range, it's 390 kilometers. So not that far for the base model. I think that's about 230 miles. But if you get the long range version, you're gonna get 510 kilometers of range. That's plenty of range, 510 kilometers. That's obviously over 300 miles. Now, the other thing worth mentioning, Ford Australia, I believe have probably done a deal with Ford America because it hasn't been selling as well as what Ford thought it would. So Ford are actually um, slowing down production of the Lightning. But if they were to start importing them and sending them to Australia, and probably Thailand as well, people in Thailand, by far the most favorite vehicle that people drive in Thailand is pickup trucks. They're also right-hand drive. So if they were to make them in right-hand drive for Thailand and Australia, they'd actually have a pretty good market for the F-150 Lightning, I think. Now keep this in mind, F-150 Lightning has had a 46% decline in sales versus last year. Ford said it was ramping production and its sales have come down. So there's probably plenty of capacity for Ford to make these and bring them to Australia. Ford's Model E division, dedicated to EVs, reported a net loss of 1.3 billion US dollars, nearly 2 billion Australian dollars. That's an increase over the 1 billion they lost in the previous quarter. So they're, they're losing, I believe, around 36,000 US dollars on every one of these they sell. But at the same time, Ford know they need to make these vehicles. They need to mass produce them. If they don't mass produce them, they'll lose even more money. So the more they can make, the cheaper they'll be able to make them for. Anyway, what do you guys think of the F-150 line? Do you think it's a good vehicle? Is it something that you consider? Is it good that it's coming? seems to be coming to Australia? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.